Welcome to the Green Building Show, where we investigate green design and building trends throughout Australia. In this series of the Green Building Show, we've been looking at passive design. Last episode, we spoke to architect Oliver Steele and research director at the Institute for Sustainable Futures, Caitlin McGee, about the principles of thermal mass. In our final episode on passive design, we'll be looking at how passive design affects the value of property and if it's more expensive to passively design our houses. We'll also look into the benefits of passively designed homes for the homeowner and the environment. We asked Oliver if he has noticed a surge of interest in people trying to be sustainable in their builds. I find most clients are interested in sustainability. Generally what it comes down to is that people don't want to spend more on a sustainable design than they would on a conventional design. So our aim is always to justify sustainable technologies, features and methods based on a cost neutral outcome wherever possible. We asked Caitlin and Oliver if building passively and sustainably is more expensive. How much does it cost to put a window on the north side of a house as opposed to putting a window on the west side of a house? It's the same cost. Good design, good passive design doesn't have to cost any more than conventional thoughtless design. It just takes a little bit of planning, a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of care. I would say probably not if you get a really good designer who knows what they're doing, but it actually depends because if you want to um, incorporate things like uh, double glazing, um, you know, advanced glazing systems or, you know, certain materials um, actually will cost more at the moment. Um, so double glazing is a good example of that. Um, although, having said that, the more people who use it, the more the costs will come down till it's almost cost competitive. Sometimes that means that capital cost versus running cost needs to be considered. Something might, might cost more up front, like solar panels for example, but if you can demonstrate that that's going to have a payback period of less than five years, and the person plans to spend at least ten years in the house, then it makes good financial sense. Certainly some aspects of passive design cost more, but a lot of the aspects are absolutely free. It's just about how you design your home, where you put the living areas. You know, that's actually, um, so you can make a really expensive mistake if you don't think about passive design um, because it has implications for kind of heating and cooling down the track. Um, so I would say sometimes passive design can cost a bit more, um, but it doesn't have to, so I wouldn't want people to think, oh, passive design, that's out of my reach, because there are always things that you can do that are free. <laughs> um, and then if you want to go for the high-tech materials, they might cost you a little bit more, but they will pay back over the lifetime of the house, you know, pretty quickly, actually. Once you move into things like um, uh, extra insulation, uh, additional thermal mass for passive purposes beyond what's required for structure, uh, then costs can start to increase a little, but generally if you, um, if you design well, then a, a good passive design house can be cost neutral to a conventionally designed house and it's more comfortable to live in and it's going to save you money in the long term and that's why it's a no-brainer. With people more conscious of treading lightly in all areas of their lives than ever before, we wondered if this meant that sustainably built and passively designed homes are fetching more on the market. It's hard to say at the moment that there's a definite correlation between passive design and market value. However, I think that things are really starting to change there with um, mandatory energy ratings for new buildings. That's going to have a big impact. And also I think that uh, general knowledge and understanding and appreciation of in good environmental design and <clears throat> lower running costs of houses is becoming a factor and people are becoming more aware of it. So I would hope in the next five to ten years that the answer to that question will, will change significantly and will be yes. There hasn't been too much research done on that but there is um, the example of Canberra where they have mandatory disclosure so what that means is um, you've, when you sell your house you've got to actually say this is the energy rating. Um, so the energy rating, the NATHERS rating, is actually an indication of how well 
um, your, you know, how, um, how well the passive design has been done on your house. Um, so that rating indicates the ability for the home to kind of naturally heat and cool itself. Um, so homes with a good rating, there was some evidence that they were selling for a bit more in Canberra. Um, also some real estate agents like LJ Hooker for example are starting to, when they sell and lease properties, um, actually have passive design elements on the checklist so that um, you know, potential customers are aware um, that you know, this house is, you know, has a good layout and here are the benefits or whatever it is. So um, while there's not a whole lot of research on that, in my experience certainly um, it is valued and it's going to be valued more in the future, especially as we become more aware of the relationship between you know, good home design and energy bills and um, you know, like especially in a future where energy costs may be rising. So, I would say it already makes a bit of a difference, but in the future that's only going to be clearer. So why should people consider passive design in their builds? Passive solar design is beneficial to homeowners because it reduces their power bills. It's as simple as that. And um, power, <clears throat> power and gas is, is increasing in, 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 in price. Power and gas is increasing in price. There's been a lot of talk about um, power bills going up and the carbon tax and all these issues and kind of things are going up and down a little bit at the moment, but in the long term, I can't see any other scenario than power prices increasing significantly. And that is going to put the onus on homeowners to be generating their own power or on society to be generating renewable energy on a larger scale. <clears throat> but the days of cheap, plentiful, coal-fired electricity, I think are gone. And so using passive design to minimise the amount of energy that you need to keep a house comfortable is going to save a homeowner a lot of money in the long term. Um, passive design is beneficial for the homeowner in a number of ways. So, um, I mean, cost is, is an obvious way, um, also comfort. So if we look at cost, um, it's really about being smart up front um, in the way that you design your house so that you minimise running costs over the the life cycle of the house because your energy bills can actually be a you know a fairly big proportion of your costs and going into the future um, we all know that energy costs are rising so if you design your house well to, to need no or minimal heating and cooling you're already ahead of the game financially so from a cost perspective it's really important but also from a comfort perspective I mean it's just much nicer to live in a home that's naturally comfortable so um, it's good on all fronts. And what are the environmental benefits? Passive design benefits the environment by <clears throat> reducing the amount of active technology that a house needs to use to stay cool in summer and warm in winter. And that reduces power consumption and reduces pollution, which is generated by power consumption. It's really beneficial for the environment because it's basically just about, if you put the thought into good design, um, it means that your house is going to be um, basically either free or very cheap to run. So, I mean, that's good for you, but good for the environment because you're not using, um, you know, fossil fuels to, to heat or cool your home. So it's all about kind of natural heating and cooling. Um, or if you do need extra heating and cooling, it's, it's absolutely minimised so that's why it's good for the environment because it actually like if you put the effort into design for the lifetime of that house it'll be very comfortable and efficient and you won't need huge amounts of energy input to keep it you know comfortable inside. We asked Caitlin if passively designing your house locks in a particular style. It doesn't actually affect the style of your home it's just really about Kind of logic you know as I explained before about layout about where you put openings about what kind of building materials you use um, and if you do that you'll have a much more comfortable home um, you'll lock in low energy bills for the home's lifetime. So how can homeowners get passive design elements into an already built home? In many old houses just putting insulation in can make a huge difference because it's amazing the number of houses um, existing houses that were built like 20 or more years ago which don't have any insulation at all so that can make a big difference. Um, you could, um, if you're replacing glazing, you could think about double glazing. Um, so yeah, there are a number of things that you can actually do to improve.